How you doing, man? Good. All right, we have been joined by the Marquette student athletes, so please raise your hand and uh, we'll get a mic to you right over here. Steve, you just wanted to compare first game to name two. and affiliation. Oh, I'm please. sorry, John Pudner, Marquette Hoops. Thanks. Uh, two years ago, guards were all freshmen, had a rough first half on UNC and kind of collapsed. Just looked like there was no panic yesterday, even with the turnovers in the first half, second half, 15 assists, two turnovers for the team. Was there just the, the confidence ever weighing a little when they were getting to you in the first half? Question I for think Stevie. Yeah. I think just throughout you know the past two years, we've just had a lot of experience in those moments against good teams. Uh, like Western Kentucky was so you know just being able to pull from those experiences know that we can still win the game if we you know focus on doing what we do and focus on each other and bring our own energy so I think just having you know those chips in our pocket like we like to say just helps us you know remain calm uh, but just still having the urgency to like step step it up right here in front uh, Ben Steele Marky Journal Sentinel Stevie you know your your wrist is taped up your shoulders wrapped up how do you find the right mentality between being aggressive and not just being totally reckless with your with your body? Um, I mean, how I play, I, I, I'm going to, you know, play kind of reckless regardless. But, I mean, for me, I feel like it's just like, you know, the pain in the locker room after we lost to UConn, uh, Biggie's Tournament, the pain in the locker room uh, last year when we lost to Michigan State. Like, that's worse than, like, you know, any bumps or bruises that – you know anybody's dealing with so just kind of going off that and having that mindset just going to every game and you know just expecting the expected knowing that you know I'm not 100% but nobody's 100% and just being aware of that acknowledging it and then just going out there and just giving it all I got back in the back Zach called the barn media group a uh, question for Jop playing against another Milwaukee native is it a certain level of respect or pride that you have, especially outperforming them? Um, and is that you know, something you consider when you see other people from Wisconsin in this tournament? Question for David. Um, yeah, you definitely want to, like you said, outperform them. Uh, but that's just anybody you're going up against. But like you said, especially someone from back home. So uh, you definitely want to have those bragging rights. You definitely want to go out there and show everybody what's up. So, um, but like I said, that's against any team. So. Um, it's definitely cool playing against other guys from Milwaukee, but we just want to win regardless. Right here. Uh, Kaylin Wright from the Marquette Wire. Jop, what have you learned about Colorado and what kind of sticks out to you about them and question, the way they play? Question for David. Um, they're a really good team, obviously. Every team in the tournament now is really good at this point in the season. Um, they have a great size for their position. Um, and they can, they're all pretty skilled. They all, you know, they don't have a weak link. They all can shoot, put the ball on the floor and pass. So. Um, like any game here, it's going to take our best effort to beat them. We have right here. Yeah. Paul Frischner of Big East Digital Network. Stevie, I'm curious, looking back at last year and the goals that you wanted to achieve last year and now what you all know you want to achieve this year, always looking forward to March. That was always the end of the road here, and now you're one win away from the Sweet 16. What is your guys' mentality going into this game and being so close there to getting to the second weekend of the NCAA tournament? Stevie? Uh, our mentality is just, you know, to continue. It was the same as what it was coming in, just, you know, stay in the moment, uh, just enjoy the moment, have fun, uh, and, you know, just bring, bring, ener bring our energy. And, you know, that will all lead to us being our best us, in which we feel like our best us, you know, can give us a good shot. Uh, to compete with and beat anybody. So that's our main focus is, you know, focus on what we do, we do best and the things we can control uh, to put ourselves in the best position possible to win. Questions, please? Right right here in front. Okay, we'll go, yeah. Uh, Stevie, uh, yesterday Colorado scored 102 points, shot 63% from the field. Just how important is your defense going to be going into tomorrow's game? Stevie? I mean, yeah, it's definitely going to be huge. Uh, like Job said, they, you know, all got, I mean, all the guys on their team can go uh, offensively. They all skill, they call shoot, they call drive, they call pass. So just, you know, first thing is first, acknowledging that and just knowing it's going to take each and every one of us uh, to, you know, guard the ball as five and just step up uh, to that challenge. And we've been stepping up to challenges all year, so I think this is another one that's going to be fun. And, I mean, that's what, you know, March Madness is for, to compete against the best. Right here. 
Stevie, that high energy style that you play with, where did you, where does that come from for you? Where did you develop that? Stevie? Uh, I would just say just from my desire to win, I've just always been super competitive uh, when I was younger. Like a loss would result in tears, temper tantrums. So I've been able to, you know, harness that now. But uh, yeah, just my desire to win and just the, the passion I have, you know, playing for my teammates and playing for my coaches. And then just, you know, everything's better when you win. So, I mean, every game I go into, I want to just give my best effort and just help my teammates, you know, energy-wise, whatever I can do. It doesn't have to be anything special. It just can be whatever it takes to win. Right here. Paul Frischner, Big East Digital Network. David, I'm curious. Uh, you mentioned the size before of Colorado, but Eddie Lampkin is is massive inside. I'm just curious what you guys have talked about with him and, and you personally uh, just ahead of that matchup tomorrow. David? Um, like you said, is, uh, he's a big dude. He does do uh, good work down there, and he's impressive when he's around the basket. But even more so, he's a really good passer, so we got to try to limit that as well. But we're still going to play our normal normal defense, you know what I'm saying, and just try to you know, disrupt them, make them uncomfortable. But um, he's a good player. Questions, please? Right here in the front. Gary Graves, Associated Press. Uh, David. Looking at yesterday's tape or tape from yesterday's game, what do you all kind of do differently or do you feel like you did in the second half that you feel like you can kind of carry forward that, you know, not only change the momentum of the game yesterday, but something you can build on, uh, especially now with Tyler back? David? Um, I think in the second half, we were the aggressors. I think in the first half, towards the end of the first half, last 10 minutes, they were kind of the aggressors, uh, Western Kentucky was, and they were kind of doing what they wanted. and. Um, some guys on their team was having a game. So second half, we wanted to shut all of it off and uh, just be the aggressor. So that was our emphasis to come out in the first, or the second half, the beginning of the second half in the first round and just, you know, try to disrupt them, pressure up on them, make it difficult for them. Questions, please? Do we have anything on Zoom now? Right in the back. Yeah. Uh, Jacob Toby, Nine News Denver. Um, What's it going to take to stop KJ Simpson late in games for you guys? Stevie, we'll start with you. Let's talk to me. Uh, I think, you know, just similar to what we do uh, with every team, just guarding the ball uh, as five. And just, I mean, he's a good player. Obviously, he made huge plays down the stretch last night. So, you know, we're not going to hold him scoreless. Uh, just, but, you know, we can just do our best to make things tough on him and make them earn everything. But, you know, down the stretch, I think it just, you know, stick, to, stick with our rules, stick with what we do, and don't get away from that. Uh, if he hits a couple shots, if he, you know, has a couple nice plays, just trust in what we do. David? Um, like, like Steve said, trust in what we do. Um, we know, obviously, Steve's going to be guarding him, but it's five guys guard the ball at once. So, um, um, obviously, he's a good player, and obviously, we like Stevie's matchup, so um, just we're going to see what happens. but. Um, he's been really good down the stretch in the uh, first two games that they had, and we've obviously been scouting that as well. But just like Stevie said, make him uncomfortable. Back in the back. Uh, Zach Call, the Barn Media Group. Coach Smart has talked about his ways to celebrate moments from each game, his poker chips and other things like that. Uh, what was the biggest takeaway from last night's game, uh, either from Coach Smart or in your guys' opinion? Stevie? Uh, I think the biggest takeaway was you know, we got to just lead with our energy. Uh, we can't wait for, you know, shots to go in or for us to go on a run to, you know, have energy. I think our energy is our precursor to everything we do. So if we, you know, bring that regardless of circumstances, then, you know, it enables, enables us to be our best offensively and defensively. David, do you want? Um, I think <clears throat> the biggest things we can take away from Yesterday's game is that it's a full 40-minute game. I think we played good in stretches of that game, and I think just continuing to build up to playing good for the whole 40 minutes, I think will get us closer to our best. And obviously, that's been our theme uh, for the whole tournament is to be our best us. Right here. Jop, you had a double-double yesterday. I know Shock has challenged you on the boards a couple times this season, but what, what flipped for you yesterday? What, how did you turn on that switch yesterday? David? Honestly, I didn't, I didn't like how I played in the first half. I thought I was just giving up too many buckets. I thought um, some of the schemes I messed up, and I just wanted to make up for it. And more so, just more than anything, just trying to do whatever it takes. So um, we came in second half down seven. So whatever I could do to impact that, um, I tried to do. Right here. 
Uh, David, uh, John Budden, Market Hoops again. Uh, last year, we really thought of you as kind of all offense. Stevie is all defense. Can you talk about this year how, I mean, you've made great defensive plays. You're guarding tough guys. Stevie has 16 points in the game, including probably a better three-pointer than you've ever hit at the end. I couldn't believe that horse shot. But uh, you talk about how you've just both balanced out and you're both, um, you know, on both ends of the court now. David? Um, well, we got to keep working on our games individually. So, um, obviously, offseason is a big thing. And then another thing is um, us telling each other what we need from each other. So. Um, they needed me to be, become more of a defender, a better defender, obviously, and I took on that challenge. And I, me personally, I feel like Stevie's always been nice on offense. I think just, um, just getting older, getting more opportunities, he's able to show how good he is. So, yeah. Anything else for the student athletes? All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Coach Smart will be here uh, momentarily.
is on his way. And just to note that the locker rooms are open at the same time that the coach and student athletes are available up here. Good man, how are you? Good. All right, Coach Smart has joined us, and Coach, we'll just have you make an opening statement, and then we'll go to questions. It's great to be back. We're excited about this game tomorrow. Um, you know, for our guys, obviously we played much better in the second half yesterday than we did in the first half. 
Uh, I think there was a, a few different factors that, that went into play. Number one, some uh, NCAA tournament jitters. I mean, I don't, I don't think it, it ever changes, no matter how many years you, you coach or play in the NCAA tournament. It just it feels a little bit different, you know, when you get to that first game. Um, obviously, Tyler's return, I thought he played really, really well. I thought he did a great job in both halves. Uh, but in the second half, uh, guys did a better job playing off of him and, and, and utilizing all the things that, that he does so well. And then defense, most importantly, I thought in the first half, we didn't have the, the level of violence that we need on the defensive end. And Western Kentucky was able to really uh, be the aggressors. Um, second half, we were much, much better. So how that relates to tomorrow, you know, we don't want to wait till halftime to be the best us. Uh, Colorado's got a terrific team. Coach Boyle's done an awesome job for a long time there. And they've got a veteran group, um, plus Cody Williams, you know, probably the best young player in the country. So it's going to be a heck of a challenge, an exciting game. Questions, please? Right here in the front. Uh, ben Steele, Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Shaka. Um, you don't have to introduce yourself. Oh, right? OK. Yeah, it's for the people out there. Yes, he does. Um, <laughs> Stevie takes so much contact out on the court. Um, I know you don't want to limit his aggressiveness, but as a coach, how do you approach just that balance between you know, aggressiveness and concern for his physical well-being? That's a good question. I think that applies to, to anybody that's still playing right now. Uh, but certainly, you know, someone that plays with reckless abandon like Stevie does. Um, he's got a variety of bumps and bruises, uh, you know, like most players do when you get to mid to late March. I think the biggest thing is, is awareness uh, on his part and on my part and our part of how he's feeling and where he is. And when I say awareness, also being present in the moment because um, – that gives you the best opportunity to evade bad things happening to your body. Um, that might be a different answer than you, you were expecting, but I, I think that Stevie uh, knows as well as anyone how to get through you know, little spaces on the floor. Um, because he plays like a bowling ball, sometimes he is going to be involved in collisions, uh, but he's one of the toughest guys I've ever been around. Uh, Pat Forty from Sports Illustrated. Chuck, it's a little bit of a general existential question. Why do good shooters need to get up so many shots to still be good shooters? Like, if you're already good at it, why do you need to shoot 500 times a day? Well, I think shooting is um, so mental. Uh, even the best shooters miss the majority of their shots from outside, three-point shots. Um, and so it's not exactly the same, but it's kind of like baseball where, I mean, if you can get on base one out of three times, then, then you're a phenomenal hitter. Well, if you can make four out of 10 from outside, you're a phenomenal shooter. Um, but those other six can wreak havoc on your mind, you know, or just one can. And so, in the game, you know, unless you're the guy that, that, that was 10 for 20 the other day because it was a Gronky from Oakland, um, you're not going to get that big of a sample size. And, you know, probably in his case, he knows I'm, I got another one coming, you know, the next possession. But most guys are not like that. So, you know, one or two misses can, can, can play with you mentally. So I think what the reps do – is it just, it, it's like deposits in the bank, you know, and, and guys feeling good about themselves. And shooters tend to be superstitious. Uh, they, maybe they would call it routine oriented, but there's definitely a, a superstition there. Tyler's like that. Cam is like that. Um, you know, if you ask Cam Jones, why did you miss? He'll say it slipped. And if you ask him, 
did you think that was a good shot? He'll always say, yeah, I, I mean, I thought I was going to make it. Um, but you need some of that, you know, and I, I think um, the work that guys put in gives them the confidence that they need. Right here. Coach, uh, John Fudner, Marquette Hoops. You talked about jitters, you know. Two years ago, you had three freshman guards panicked against UNC. It just looked like you fell apart. Yesterday, it looked to me like they had resolved. I mean, can you talk about the difference? And second part of the question is, Jay Wright talked about how that easy first win can sink you in the second round. Some advantage to going through that tough first half? Yeah, we definitely have some guys on our team that have grown up, you know, over the last few years. And, you know, I'm, I guess I'm an old-fashioned guy. I still uh, enjoy getting a chance to coach guys for multiple years and, and being able to be with this group of guys that are in our junior and senior classes. Um, Tyler Kolick, Oso Iguodaro, Stevie Mitchell, David Joplin, uh, Cam Jones, also Cam Brown, and RJ Ralston are, are, are two, two walk-ons in that junior class. Those guys are like family, and they know each other so well. Uh, they know me uh, so well, and yeah, we've come a long way from that game. That was a rough one. Um, you know, in terms of the first game, yeah, I, I think it can go a lot of different ways. Um, you know, certainly, if there was any ever any thought that we didn't need to be our best to advance in the NCAA tournament, uh, you know, hopefully that that's gone after that first half. You know, yesterday, um, and I do think humility is is always going to be part of the recipe for winning. Uh, but you know, at the same time, we got up close and, and personal experience with UConn this year, and I think that they, of any team that I've seen, maybe since Baylor a few years ago when they won it, strike an incredible balance of confidence and humility. Right back here. Shaka, Jacob Toby from Nine News in Denver. Obviously, KJ Simpson made that big shot yesterday, um, sort of his NCAA moment. Um, is there a feeling amongst your guys that you don't want to be on the end of another one of that kind of moment, especially from him, you know, the best player? We don't really look at it like that. that that's what we call an avoidance goal. And we try to play through approach goals, going after something. Simpson's an awesome player. Um, you certainly need to make him miss, to your point, uh, whether it's the end of the game or the start of the game or any time in between. But easier said than done. Um, I think Colorado has some veteran players that are very grizzled and tough and understand how to create shots. And then they also have terrific skill. Uh, you know, normally in basketball, when a player shoots over 50% from the field and he shoots 40% or better from three, that's a really good offensive player. That's them almost as a team. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's pretty daunting to deal with. That's probably why they scored over 100 points yesterday. Right over here. Hey, Shaka, Ben Baby with ESPN. When you look at Colorado's size, what kind of problem does that entail, and how big is, uh, how much will that play into the, the matchup uh, tomorrow, just the size that they, they present? Well, we're used to playing against teams that are bigger than us. Um, so on one hand, um, it's really nothing new for our guys. But on the other hand, absolutely. I mean, in the game of basketball, positional size is a real factor. And really, other than at the, I guess, the five spot, even though Oso's a point, point oh, we call them for us. Other than that position, you know, they're, they're, uh, they're bigger than us. And even at that spot, they're, you know, Lumpkin is, is, is really strong. Um, but, you know, my college coach always used to say it's too late to cancel. So we're going to play the game. Right there. Scott Proctor, the Colorado and coach. You mentioned in your opening statement that Cody Williams is maybe one of the best young players in the country. What makes you say that about him and how maybe difficult is it to game plan for him when his minutes have kind of been up and down over the last few games getting back from the ankle injury? Well, he's a ridiculous talent, that's for sure. Um, and let's be honest, you know, in, in our sport, that's how young players uh, are evaluated, you know, by the, the, the talent that kind of jumps off the screen. Um, but he also 
you know, he, he, he appears to be a very high character guy who cares about winning, cares about his teammates. Um, seems like he's very, very coachable. The fact that he's coming off the bench right now uh, when he started the majority of games before he got hurt, you know, says a lot about, you know, who he is and the fact that, you know, he's about the team and about winning. How you game plan for him, I mean, you do your best. This is the same way you game plan for any other good player. Um, you know, I don't think it's necessarily one specific thing, um, but we're, we're going to need to guard the basketball. You know, he's someone that when he gets the basketball, he's really good at making things happen. Jesse Temple, The Athletic. Shaka, how do you think Tyler and Cam have managed to play so well off each other and in your time at Marquette, uh, how has that relationship between the two of them grown? They have a very high level of mutual respect for one another. And I think any time that there's respect plus a genuine care and concern for the other player as a person, then you have something really, really powerful. And you know, all of our guys have a genuine care and concern for one another. But Cam and Tyler, and I would put uh, maybe a couple of three other guys on our team in this category, they look at each other like they hold each other in a very high regard as players. And so because of that, Cam wants to bring the best out of Tyler, and Tyler wants to bring the best out of Cam. They both know that they need the other. And then Oso's the guy that, you know, from a connectivity standpoint, uh, you know, keeps everyone together. He's the best big brother that I've ever coached uh, on any team. And he can't do a lot of the things offensively that Cam and Tyler can do in terms of, you know, shooting the ball and, and the craziness that they do with the ball. Uh, but he has his own unique skill set. Um, and he wants to see those guys be their best. And when those three guys are playing really well together, I like our chances. Right back here. Coach, uh, Tyler King with the Denver Gazette. Uh, you, you mentioned KJ Simpson. Obviously, you guys are no stranger to elite point guard play, playing in the Big East, obviously, with Tyler and the, and the other guys that you guys have to go against. Is there anybody that he reminds you of that you've faced this season? And if not, what makes him so unique as a player? I think every guard is just a little bit different from the others. We've, we've played against so many good ones. I think KJ Simpson, a few things. Number one is poise. Doesn't seem like he gets rattled uh, very often, if ever. Uh, he has a really good way about him where you can tell he's confident, but he's not really caught up in anything extracurricular. He's just out there playing and trying to make his team win. Um, I think he has a toughness about him. You know, uh, just starting to get to know Colorado's team, you know, since they won the yesterday, um, he seems to be one of the toughness leaders on their team because he's older. Um, and then he's got a very high IQ for the game. So just understanding angles, you know, understanding where to go on the floor. Um, we've got to do a good job making sure we try to keep him out of the paint because even though he's a real threat outside, Man, as a team, they just do incredible damage, you know, around the basket. And even though he's the smallest guy out there for them, you know, he's one of the leaders with that. We got time for about three more, right here. Paul Frischner, Big East Digital Network. Shaka yesterday, early in the second half, Stevie Mitchell had a sequence where he had a chase down steal and came back the other way for an and one uh, layup. And from there, the rest of the way, you all outscored Western Kentucky 44 to 21 to really put the game away. It felt like that was a turning point in the game. Can you just speak to Stevie's? energy that he brings to this team and how important he is that even though he scored 16 points, the blocks and the steals and everything else he did yesterday really turned the game around? Yeah, you can't quantify what he brings. We try to quantify it. We keep track of EGBs. We keep track of deflections, uh, other energy stats. And he always grades out off the charts and that stuff. But you can't really put a you know, point total that, that, that comes out of his energy, but it is high if you could. Um, you know, we always tell our guys being the first team ready is worth about four, six, eight points in a game. Well, Stevie Mitchell's energy alone is, is, is worth a lot of points. Um, but believe it or not, it's not something that 
just happens. You know, he has to make it happen, and it takes incredible will and focus, dedication to winning on his part. So, you know, I don't ever want to take that for granted, and I also don't want anyone to think that he's like some machine that once you hit on, you know, he just does that. You know, he's a human being, and for him to will himself to be that type of ball of fire energy-wise is impressive. We have time for a couple more, Pat. Uh, how would you describe or characterize Tyler's vision or feel for offensive flow? Oh, it's crazy. Yeah, I, I think, I think, I'm no expert on the, on the next level, but I think he'll play in the NBA because of it. Uh, because he just, he has a real sense for where everyone is, including his four teammates and the five defensive players on the other team. And he has this uncanny ability to time what he wants to do around what everyone else is doing or is about to do. And some of the time he's guessing, but he guesses really, really well. And um, that's something that you can't really you know, teach or replicate. You know, it's interesting, Pat, his first year, I thought he was by far the best offensive player on our team a lot of the people that maybe covered our program or, or supported our program uh, from a fan standpoint didn't think he had the greatest year. And uh, I, I just didn't really understand that. I guess it was based on shooting. You know, he didn't shoot the ball particularly well from outside. But I knew that that would come because he's always been a great shooter in practice and in drills. Um, he just had to adjust to striking a balance between distributing and scoring. Um, so now that he's able to do both, you know, it's really impressive. Last question right here, Gary. Um, Gary Graves, Associated Press. Coach, um, I guess this is more of a wellness question. With the w awareness now about mental health and such, um, how do you help your players or what kind of things do you help uh, encourage your players to do to kind of strike that, that balance between school and athletics and, and really kind of staying on an even keel? Uh, do you have any kind of activities or, or anything, you know, for them that you, you know, that, that you tell them, say, look, you know, do what you do? Gary, that's everything. I mean, we, it's not about uh, activities or, uh, you know, maybe one-off events. That's every day. That's, if their mental health and they're, and they're feeling good about themselves, the rest of the stuff takes care of itself. It really does. I mean, I think we overrate ourselves as coaches in terms of like, you know, we're going to diagram this great play or institute this terrific defense. Our jobs in a lot of ways come down to helping these guys accept who they are, where they are, what they're doing. And this is amidst very, very challenging circumstances. I mean, how many people in here have advanced as a player in the NCAA tournament? I haven't. What these guys are doing sometimes looks easy, um, but they care about it, and I'm not just talking about our team, as much or more than anyone else who's following the game, writing about the game, tweeting about the game, betting on the game. And they put everything they have into it. And so over the summer, we, uh, we went to Italy, we took our guys to the Roman Coliseum. And all year long, we've been using the analogy that, hey, you guys are gladiators. Everybody else is the crowd. And when you're trying to be a gladiator and do something really, really hard, then you're absolutely right. Mental health is it's the key. I think remembering that they're human beings with human emotions, um, human frailties, weaknesses, um, mistakes that we all make at times is, is a big step. And then the number one word I try to help them with is acceptance, you know, just acceptance of what is. And that's, that's what our guys did at halftime yesterday. They accepted the fact that, you know, we're down seven right now and we've not played our best. And there's a lot of people in this room uh, that need to ramp it up, go harder, uh, 
you know, dot, dot, dot. And that's what's going to allow us to win. And because our guys have incredible character, that's what they did. When you get in these moments, though, there's 32 teams left, you know, still playing in college basketball. The other team's going to try to do the same thing. That's good. Thank you.